Andrew McGahan for the MacLife.com here in a little bit of a different setting than normal. Ahead of his professional debut on St. Patrick's Day in Madison Square Garden in just under a week's time, we are joined by the one and only Michael Conlon. Michael, you look a little bit tired there. Are you just out of bed? Yeah, not long out of bed, Andrew. You know, uh, just chilling out here, you know. It's uh, six days away now, so, you know, I've, I'm, I'm almost there, so it's coming into the, the weight cut stage, so... I'm just chilling out, uh, letting the body rest and recover. That's what I was going to ask you. You posted a picture the other day of you and your training partners and you look shredded to begin yeah. with. Uh, but I can see it coming in a little bit here around the cheeks as well. Are we are we feeling it now, getting close? Yeah, I'll probably start to look like a skeleton in the next few days. But, you know, that's that's natural for any fighter uh, who is who's big for the weight. Um. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I don't know if the weights are different between amateur and professional, but are you cutting a little bit extra this time for your professional? Is it 122 you have to make for pro? I'll be boxing for titles the 122 with division, but for this one, you know, because it's no title, it's only my debut, I can, I can weigh in at 124. Uh, so, you know, that's that's comfortable. Uh, I'll do it, I should do it easy enough, and, you know, I'll be an absolute giant at, at 122. Exactly. Um, I tried to send it there before we started. I'm going to edit it on this video, but your opponent, Timmy Barra, he, uh, 14 days after... The viral photo, he had uh, won a match, I believe, himself, or it was something in the gym, and he's there standing at the camera doing that. What a, what a coincidence that so many months down the line that he would be up against maybe the man he was emulating in the picture. Yeah, you know, it probably rubbed off on him, you know, seeing me, and, you know, it's fate to kind of brought it together then. If, if, if he's throwing the fingers up, and after I threw the fingers up, you know, uh, it's probably something he's wanted. Uh, so it's great, you know. I'm I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm fighting this guy. You know, I, I'm happy he's going to come in that, with that type of attitude, the the winner type of attitude, and uh, the no bullshit type of attitude. So you know, I'm just going to go in there and have to take his head off. Professional athletes, I've seen it through mixed martial arts. They're definitely some of the the toughest athletes in the world. But Olympians just have that little bit more about them. Do you know because in terms of having to qualify for it, in terms of the placement and all the fights that you have to do leading up just to that one week or that two weeks of of competition, you know, every four years, do you find that having gone through that in the past, that focusing on one single opponent for a specific fight in pro, the tunnel vision aspect that's needed, it was just a little bit easier, or do you think that no fight is an easy fight now that it's a professional? You know. Yeah, I think it's more of a it's it's easier that it's tunnel vision. Uh, you know, I think in the amateurs, yeah, your your main's always like thinking of who's next and you know who could who could I be fighting instead of like just one opponent and you know, able to focus on a proper game plan, uh, which I have been able to do for this camp. And you know, uh, for me as an athlete anyway, it doesn't matter who I fight. So well, I was always good in the amateurs are doing it, and now I've done it this way. It's it's it is actually been a lot easier. Um, it was revealed in the last couple of days Air Sport are going to be showing it live um, although the rugby didn't go our way last night RT are going to be showing it on delay after the clash with England next week um, that's huge I believe it's RT's first time showing a professional boxing fight in nearly six years and Air Sport are really getting behind sort of like Irish athletes and Irish sport at the moment um, I know that that's something that, that means a lot to you yeah definitely I'm very very grateful for these guys coming on board you know to be the first boxing fight on, on, on RT sport on RT sorry in, in six years is, is something special it's bringing back into the Bernard Dunn days uh, and you know that's what I want to be I want to be a national icon even though you know I probably already am a bit with what happened in the Olympics I want to be Ireland's greatest ever boxer and you know I feel I'm, I'm on route to doing it and the fact that I have RT in our sport behind him it's, it's going to be great uh, is this performance going to make RT decide next time we can't afford to have this on tape delay? We need this live. We need this prime time. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm actually happy the way it's worked out with RT. You know, I'm glad they're having it on at 8 p.m. on a Saturday night. You know, especially after Paddy's Day and just after rugby, because you know people are going to be in hungover from Paddy's Day, and then anybody else will be in the bars watching the TVs anyway. So you know, I'm happy it's it, it's on at 8 p.m. prime time instead of like 4 a.m. in the morning. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's going to be a fight where they want to have live next time, 100%. Um, your brother had a tremendous performance last night in Belfast. Um, just from hearing the reports on Twitter, I was just kind of like watching the updates on Twitter. It seemed like he was in an absolute back and forth war. Paddy Barnes getting a win as well. And Katie Taylor has hit the ground running. 
But out of the, they say the golden crop of those amateurs, you're the one that's making the pro debut last. Do you think yeah. that this is, that's just right, that you needed that extra time, or it's like, let's not jump into anything too soon. We just want to make sure this is perfect. Yeah, you know, I, I knew I needed to like take my time when I was making this decision because, you know, I could have boxed in, in November. They offered me the show in November on the Manny Pacquiao undercard, and, uh, you know, I turned, I turned it down. I didn't, I didn't want to box in that show. Uh, I wanted the, the St. Paddy's Day debut, and I knew I needed time to adjust to my new coach uh, and adjust to professional ranks because it is a different sport than amateur boxing. So, you know, I, I have I thought about it well, and, and I've took my time, I've, took, I've, I've made the adjustments, and, you know, you're going to see a completely different match coming uh, on March 17th. But I, I understand that you've actually hit the ground running with your coach. You know, you hear a lot of fighters say that it takes time either to get rhythm um, Own Roddy, who's Connor's striking coach, is a guy that has been praised by he can make anybody feel like a world champion on the pads. And it can take a little time for coach and fighter to be able to gel and see how they work. But I know you've said that it's actually been much better than expected. Yeah, usually for me as well, it does. Even though I've boxed at such a high level and stuff, I would still find usually with working with new coaches, uh, it takes me a bit of time to get used to. But when I started working with my new coach, Manny, uh, it felt like I was working with my own father back home. Uh, it was it was so easy, so simple, so fluent that just the between us, it was just it was perfect. You know, it was the perfect match. It was the, it was the perfect coach I needed uh, for for this next step. If you don't mind me saying, you've been I don't want to say selfish, but you've made the right decision for your own pro career. You've moved over to the states full time now. I know that must have been hard, and um, moving away from your your friends and your family and your your parents as well, but. Do you feel that that is sort of the grind? You need to go through those things. You need to experience that discomfort. You need to be telling yourself every day, I'm doing this for a greater purpose. Yeah, 100%. You know, I feel that you need to come out of your comfort zone. I know if you stay in your comfort zone, you'll never go anywhere. So, you know, I had to make that dedication, uh, dedicated trip to come here, get away from my family, get away from my friends. You know, I brought my daughter, my daughter and my fiance, but, you know, I'm actually very lucky the death came because I wasn't going to bring them. I was just going to leave them at home and do training camps. But you know, I said to move out here full time, give them 100 percent, and you know, just dedicate my life to my sport for the next few years and hopefully become very, very successful. And um, when I met you for the first time, it was that night in Belfast when Connor was doing the appearance and uh, you were on stage with him as well. The atmosphere there was incredible, especially when you consider that Connor isn't from Belfast; that he is from Dublin. Was that sort of uh, like maybe in a couple of years' time? That's going to be me there. They're going to be there for me. They're going to be there screaming yeah. for me. I'll be the homecoming kid. 100%. You know, what Connor's done, the way he has gripped the nation, the way he's gripped the world uh, is something that I would love to emulate. I think he is, he's the best, uh, best best, sports person in the world at the minute, the, the most wanted sports person at the minute. Uh, and, you know, they, they have that kind of buzz around you and, and the atmosphere you bring the events is something that I would love to do in the future. And, no, I truly believe I will do that. Does like it's? I think it's going to be nearly seven months to the day from that day in Rio when you um, turn and make your pro debut in Madison Square Garden in six days' time. It just seems like Madison Square Garden for a first-time pro fighter. It's it's iconic. Do you know what I mean? Some people could box their whole careers and never get to fight on a venue or an occasion or on a date as significant as that to an Irish fighter. Yeah, I feel that you know it's it's never been done before. Uh, for someone to make their debut in the garden as a main event, but you know, for someone to make their debut in the garden as a main event on their national holiday, uh, it's it's just it's something that you can't you couldn't I could never have dreamed of and never even have thought up. You know, I, it wouldn't have came to my because I didn't think it would be possible. Uh, but now nah, it's happened. You know, it's it's fantastic, I'm completely honored, completely grateful, and it's a, a day which I would love to make my own. You know, every single year in the garden. Uh, St. Paddy's Day is, is, is what I've loved the box every year. Isn't it crazy when you think about it though, maybe to think that the, the emotion and the hurt and the anger that you felt on that day is what captivated so many people towards you, is potentially what captivated the promoter towards you, and yeah. now it's all worked out for the better. Yeah, it's, it, it is amazing to think, and you know, it's definitely a silver lining, because that day I'm not lying, I was, that's probably the, one of the most hurtful days I've ever had in my life. Uh, it killed me, but you know I've bounced back. I've grabbed this, grabbed the nation, grabbed grabbed this opportunity with both hands, and you know it's definitely the silver lining at the at the end of the tunnel. Anyway, 
A couple of quick things now just before we let you go. Connor is walking you out. You shook hands yep. on that. Uh, he's been back on in touch to say, yeah, he's definitely still going to be going over. Do you feel that that is just the, uh, like you are, Connor is a little bit more ahead in terms of he's done a lot in the UFC. He's already become the first ever two-way champion. But it really feels that whether it's with your actions, your words or your fighting style, you're, cap- you're going to captivate the nation in the same sense that he captivated the MMA fans to begin with and then the nation afterwards. Do you feel yeah. that you're in that similar position? Yeah, that's, that's the position that I, I feel I'm in. That's the position. His position is where I hope to be in the future. Uh, and, you know, he's someone who I, who I look up to and I'm, spa- I'm inspired by every single day. Uh, so definitely, you know, I feel, I, I feel I'm you know, where he was at the start of his career and uh, I'm, I'm going to push on and do what he done as well. So, you no. Know, what a man he is and uh, you know, it's someone who, who you can help want the end of You mentioned in an interview with Off the Ball the other day which was very good um, about a stipulation in your contract you want every yeah. year without fail a fight has to happen on Irish soil Oh yeah I got, I've got that in my contract so every single year I made sure because you know first and foremost I'm Irish and I'm a proud Irish man uh, and I want to have I want to make sure I bring faith to the Ireland and bring big opportunities to the Ireland uh, and you know, I made sure that was guaranteed in my contract, and that's a good that that's a good thing to have in your contract because people will say they're going to come, but they never come. Yeah. Uh, so you know, and it's better to have it in writing, and I'm delayed to have it to fall back on it. Yeah. And since we're talking about how long it's been uh, from the transition from amateur to pro, do you feel that with a comfortable performance, then you're going to just be like, right, get the next fight four weeks, five weeks time, I'm ready to go again. Like this is going to like. I, I'm gelled yeah. now, I'm ready, I'm ready to hit the pro ranks running. I think you said you want between six and eight fights in 2017 alone. Yeah, well, that's that's the plan. You know. My next fight's potentially going to be April 22nd. It was going to be on the Manny Pacquiao uh, Amir Khan undercard, but that seems to have fell through. So, you know, it still could be on April 22nd here in LA somewhere or else Boston. So, you know, hopefully it's Boston. You know, Boston. Then we're back out again in, in June. Uh, at the Garden again, Puerto Rico again. Then we're in September, uh, and then we're back in Belfast in December. Lovely. So end then, of the year, finish off the year on a high note in Belfast. We'll finish off the year on a high note in Belfast, and then I think we've got one, we'll have to have one more before before March anyway again, because that's the year. So you know, it's a minimum of six fights a year. Lovely. And then finally, a lot of mixed martial arts fighters are criticizing Connor for the way that he is maybe holding up the division or going after Floyd or but surely for most boxers the dream fight if you're in and around that weight class would be Floyd Mayweather because of the financial incentive that you're going to get from it so how how anybody can begrudge a guy who has never fought professional boxing yet who wants who the highest purse the highest notable guy in Floyd Mayweather wants to box him of course he's going to grasp it with both hands Listen, it's it's a, a no brainer. Why wouldn't you do it? You know, both guys both guys want the fight. I think Floyd wants it more. Floyd needs it more than Connor. You no, know, I don't think Connor needs it needs the fight, but you know, he wants the fight too, so that's unbelievable. Uh but this is this is uh something that Floyd needs money ways, I feel, and he knows, you know, they're gonna make a lot of money. It's gonna be what a hundred million more than that anyway. You know, uh that's Floyd's purse what he what he wants. Whatever Connor gets, he has to negotiate, and you know he yeah, he's the best man for the job. Uh, and you know I would look forward to seeing it, no matter who you are, no matter what you are, you can't you can't deny either fighter because at the end of the day you're in this business to make money, you're not in this business to take blows or or, or get get choked out or, or, or anything. Like this you're in, you're in to make money and and get out with your health intact. Exactly, so, make as much as quick as possible and get out yeah. health intact. Yeah. And maybe you've seen that side of it now with a young child, with a fiance. You're kind of thinking like, yeah. Let's get in, let's blow up, let's get the cash, and let's have a happy life. That's it. That's what I want to do. No, I want to do five years. Five years and get out. You know, I'll be 30 by then and get out of there. Excellent. Michael Conlon, thank you very much. You're fighting live on Air Sport on Paddy's Day. Around the time that you're fighting, the Irish yeah. people may be a little bit worse for wear if the Paddy's Day drinking goes on as usual. But <laughs> the follow up the next day on RT as well at 8 pm is definitely unmissable. Um, just a quick thing, Michael, if you have anything maybe for the people supporting you in Belfast back home, the people that are going to be tuning in in Ireland, what are they going to see when they tune in on St. Patrick's Day to watch Michael Conlon's pro debut? Actually, I believe you're going as Michael, not Mick Conlon, because your mum yeah. called you Michael. 
Yeah, my mother called me Mickle. She she would be angry if I was getting called Mick all the time. I got my friends, everybody calls me Mick. I call myself Mick, but at the same time, when it comes to formal stuff, it has to be Mickle. But <laughs> but uh, for everybody back home, I just say thanks for the support. No tune in. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an exciting night. It's gonna be an entertaining night. It's gonna be a patriotic night. Uh, and you're gonna see a whole new Mickle coming, a different Mickle coming that you've seen in Rio. You're gonna see a happy, uh, enthusiastic, and powerful kid.